Hello boys, and uh, this video will be about the SL Linux. So, long story short, if you want to know how you can fix all the possible problems that may be caused on your systems or servers by SL Linux and uh, you don't want to disable it, you are not uh, willing to spend time enough to do the uh, complete research on how to configure it, you just want to fix it quickly, then this video is for for use so uh, stay tuned and and we'll eventually get to it uh, but before we start with uh, the actual fix we probably need to talk a little bit about what SL Linux actually is so it is written like this so SL Linux and uh, what it basically is uh, security enhanced Linux um, kind of something similar like a firewall so security system inside the operating system itself which will decide which operations uh, should be allowed to do by the systems by the applications uh, uh, services and uh, what do exactly like open some file or perform a connection or uh, write some file. Uh, SL Linux itself was developed by the United States Security Agency which is NSA not the um, yeah, uh, as a series of patches to Linux kernel uh, using the Linux security models which are called LSM and SL Linux basically defines and access controls for the applications, processes, and also files on a system. So basically, when an application or a process known as a subject in terminology of the SL Linux makes a request to access an object, like example, it could be any file, maybe the config file or the log file, then what SL Linux does it checks with an access control vector cache which is known as uh, AVC in again SL Linux terminology where permis permissions are ca cached for the subjects and objects and then if SL Linux is unable to uh, make a decision based on the cached permissions it will send a request to security server which checks for the context on the application or a process and grants or denies a permission so this is more like uh, theory part and uh, probably was a little bit too complicated for a video called like uh, easy steps how to do it. Uh, first of all where you can find SL Linux. Uh, if you have as example a Debian system uh, most likely you don't have SL Linux and if you have any issues it is not the cause. Uh, you will meet them definitely on a CentOS operating systems on the Red Hat, so RHEL family, and also the Fedora. So these are the distributions where SL Linux is installed out of the box. And it is not only installed out of the box, it is also enabled out of the box. So it is working, uh, enforcing, checking all the permissions right after you install your clean operating system. So how can I actually test if uh, I have SL Linux up and running on my system? Very simple, you don't need to do any configuration, just type get enforce. Enforcing, it means it is working. Um, how you can disable it uh, temporary uh, set enforce zero now if I will type a get enforce you see that it is in the permissive state set enforce one it again is in the enforcing state but uh, if I will do the restart let's say I want to do something which is not working I changed it to the permissive state after the restart it will again be enforcing if you want to do that uh, let's say setting forever you need to change the Etsy as uh, Linux uh, config file and here uh, parameter as Linux instead of enforcing uh, change to disable it or permissive so there's also a quite a big difference between the permissive and disabled so what happens when uh, the status is the default one enforcing let's say you run some kind of duplication uh, software process whatever else which is blocked by SL Linux and uh, SL Linux also will generate uh, the audit log that the process was blocked plus the process is actually blocked if 
SL Linux is disabled, then simply it is not running at all. Nothing is being checked, checked against the AVC. So no uh, logs in the audit log, nothing. It is just not loaded, it is not working. However, permissive means that SL Linux is on, it is checking all the permissions. If something is denied based on your AVC, SL Linux will write uh, the output about denied operations in the audit log but it will still allow it to work so the application will still kind of work all of the processes will work fine right so that's about it and uh, now in the let's say real life example how SL Linux can cause problems to any systems um, I will show this on the Zabbix example so the monitoring solution if you don't know anything about it, just check uh, other videos in my channel, uh, which is basically a service. And uh, right now I have SL Linux enforced and I will try uh, to start systemctl start Zabbix server and check the log file. So var log Zabbix, uh, Zabbix server dot log. And we can see that it was kind of starting, then using configuration file and connection, oh, failed, sorry, this is my problem. Uh, systemctl start MariaDB. And now systemctl restart Zabbix server and tail the server log file. So see, uh, it tried to start, but actually it failed. Cannot initialize alert manager, cannot bin socket, so permission denied, something is not working. And this is uh, straightforward caused only by uh, SL Linux. So how we can fix it? Uh, of course, we could disable it, but SL Linux is not, um, let's say, it's not your enemy. It's really a good thing. It's a really good security thing on your servers. And uh, if you would ask me, then I would insist that you really should have your SL Linux up and running on your production servers. And it's really not a good idea to simply disable it just because you don't know how to, let's say, configure it uh, quickly enough uh, to allow only some specific application or services to function. Uh, so what, what we can do, we know that our app is not running and uh, we know that it because of the SL Linux. So we need to check the audit log. And uh, we can do that in less var log audit audit.log. So this is the default location where the SL Linux writes its messages. And uh, we can see that time ago, like a lot of the operations resolution were success. So everything was fine. But if we will go to the bottom, so the last lines in the audit log, we see that many things are failed, resolution failed, AVC, remember I talked about uh, vector cache, denied, create, denied to create a PID, this from uh, Zabbix server, Zabbix server preprocessing socket, this was exactly the same that we saw in our uh, Zabbix server log file, see, Zabbix server log, uh, alerter, okay, so this was a bit different, but we can go again to the audit log and search for alerter and turn this. So Zabbix server alerter socket was denied. And these messages are just confirmation that in this case, the problem is really only SA Linux, right? Uh, so what we can do, like, you can configure a SL Linux pretty easily. You can define a new policies, you can change existing ones, and uh, you can also change the Boolean values for the policies that are already within SL Linux. So right now to fix our Zabbix, let's do a couple of things. Like we know that it failed, it tried to start. We see that uh, from our log file, so it tried. And then upon one moment when it had to create a pre-processing socket, it failed and we have these messages in the audit log. We saw them here. So we can actually use these messages from the audit log to create uh, custom policy for our Zabbix. And how to do that, uh, very simple, I'll clean the screen, just type grep, so we will be searching everything for the Zabbix, this is just a grep command, in the var log audit, audit log, 
and we will pipe this in audit to allow utility this will generate uh, based on what was written to the audit log for all the time uh, based on the grip on the Zabbix so not all the lines not from all the applications only the uh, the lines that are matching the string Zabbix and we can see that what can be allowed what rules and policies can be generated from the content of the audit log so first of all uh, one thing uh, this AVC can be allowed using one of these booleans. So we're talking about a booleans. HTTPD can network. HTTPD can connect to Zabbix. Uh, and yeah, <clears throat> that's it. So how can we actually use them? So we know that we can do that, but how? And with the booleans, it's actually very easy. Uh, all of these booleans are already within inside SL Linux and there's just choice uh, disabled or enabled. Do we allow HTTPD connect the network or we don't? Can our HTTPD connect to Zabbix or it doesn't? And first of all, how can we check all of our booleans is again one word command get sabool minus a. So this will list all of the booleans that we have on our SL Linux. And you also can see the values like uh, use USB is on, something else is off. So what we can do, we can grip the Zabbix. And there we go. So Zabbix can network, Zabbix run sudo, HTTPD can connect Zabbix off. And to change these values, what we simply need to do is not the getsable, but setsable minus p uh, zabbix uh, can network and equals one uh, without the spaces there we go done and right now if i will again run and get sable minus a grab zabbix i see that zabbix can network is on so this boolean setting already is fixed but uh, like 99% it's not it so it is just a part a smallest part which usually is uh, covered uh, during the installation and uh, if I will check again the grip okay, it's not here uh, so grip zabbix bar log outed out log out to allow so uh, again we see the same output because it, it's not new the log file is still the same so how can we actually allow everything that is inside uh, the audit log with just one command pretty easy so same grip zabbix var log audit audit uh, dot log audit to allow i will be creating a module so minus capital m uh, new module dot pp no just new module sorry click enter and you see uh, important to make this policy package active execute sm model so just copy paste uh, new model dot pp and should be done in a second there we go. So right now with these commands, what I did, I've checked all the audit log and I used audit to allow utility to create a custom policy, custom model that will allow everything that was denied. Uh, the problem is that I kind of did it, but if I will, uh, again, I can show you that uh, my SL Linux is still on, so enforcing. And if I will now restart the Zabbix server, I can check uh, the log file again and okay it, it actually started in this case but uh, yeah it is working uh, the thing is that normally let's say if this would be a clean installation I've just installed the Zabbix server and I have a SL Linux on I try to start it and I immediately get some error message just like we had previously about a socket so what we do uh, we know the command so out it to hollow minus capital M create a new model based on the uh, output of our log file we create a model apply it and we hope that everything will be good good but uh, then we try to restart the server 
and we see that it failed to start again but this time it got past the previous error message with let's say the alerter socket and now it is stocked on the pre-processing socket and what we might do we might again like check the audit log yes right there is new deny message and again use audit to allow create a new module apply it restart the server we see that it got the past uh, pre-processing socket and again it failed on the next one. So again, out to follow and st so long. So too long and not effective. So instead, uh, what we need to do is normally when you're just deploying a new applications, uh, type set and force zero. So we are just setting up the server. And now we can do all the uh, all required operations. So restart Zabbix server, uh, system CTL restart Zabbix agent. Uh, if we would have the proxy, do the same with the proxy, same with the Java gateway. And it would allow all these operations. But if something actually is not allowed, allowed by the permissions from the AVC, it will write the deny logs in the audit log. So after you started all the apps you want to have started, then you can turn it back to set enforce one to be uh, enforcing and use your grep on the uh, on the audit log to create one single module uh, policy that will allow everything that you want to allow. Uh, this is very easy within services and applications because normally nothing changed. Like if you need to create three sockets during the startup, then it will be the same for tomorrow, um, next two days or after two weeks. But if we're talking about some uh, let's say processes, uh, scripts, um, especially if we're talking about a monitoring, so you add some new monitoring check on your system, let's say monitor some of the log files, then each time you will add a new item, a new file to be monitored, it again might require uh, change in the SL Linux. Right, uh, what else? Uh, be careful because in theory this is very simple, like we don't actually need to dig inside uh, the audit log uh, for the Zabbix and uh, search for something who was doing what, why it was denied. All we need to do is execute this one single line. But remember, SL Linux is for security. And theoretically, if we don't check what we will allow and let's say we have our Zabbix server up and running, but at the same time some uh, bad guys were trying to hack our system using the Zabbix and only thing that was uh, um, blocking them for doing that was SL Linux. So they got past Zabbix, they got past all the passwords and they were trying to do some bad things and only thing that prevented them was SL Linux. So now with this command we actually allowed everything, even if in the audit log there was something, uh, let's say, very bad. So the best practice would be, of course, to check in the audit log what exactly is denied. Maybe there is something that you don't want to allow. All right. So yeah, that's the quick lesson for today about the SL Linux. Um, really don't uh, disable it just because you don't know how to use it so if you don't want to do the research because it's actually quite a complicated topic it is also possible to write the policies on your own without using any audit to allow uh, applications but it is complicated so instead of that uh, better simply use audit to allow and simply allow something that you really want to uh, rather than completely disabling this so Linux. So that's about it for today. Uh, thank you for your attention again and see you in the next videos. Goodbye guys.